foresight, ingenuity, integrity, commitment. These are the traits that make up vision. They're the traits that can transform a landscape and they're the traits that deliver lasting value and sustainability. And they are the traits on which J. Byard Boyle Sr. built a legacy of visionary development and lasting impact. Memphis was booming in 1908. The city was rebuilding rapidly from the decimation of the yellow fever epidemic. And it now had its first library, its first skyscraper, and the new Frisco Bridge across the Mississippi River. And 1908 was the year Bayard Boyle was born to Edward L. and Imogene Boyle. Boyle likely learned a good bit about persistence early on from his father, who was in the process of developing Memphis prestigious Belvedere Boulevard, a beautiful residential thoroughfare that the commercial appeal deemed too visionary to ever be realized. By 1931, Byard had grown into a young man with a sharp mind and a confident vision. He had graduated from the rigorous Hill School in Pennsylvania and had learned to fly, sometimes piloting himself to and from Yale University where he graduated with a degree in philosophy. And in 1933, Byard achieved what he often said was his greatest accomplishment, winning the hand of Elizabeth Raglan, to whom he'd be married for more than 60 years. It was also the year Byard and his brothers, Snowden and Charles, founded Boyle Investment Company. The firm took off, but Byard put business on hold during World War II to serve his country in the United States Army where he had contact with key leaders of the war effort, including Generals Marshall, Patton, Eisenhower, Bradley, and Lear. He earned the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, an infantry combat badge, European theater ribbons, the Croix de Guerre from the French government, and a Bronze Star from Eisenhower. After the war, Boyle's company began buying land and developing it into residential subdivisions and shopping centers. By the 1950s, the firm had become a full-service real estate investment operation, adding commercial and industrial properties and a long list of services, including sales, leasing and management, construction, mortgage banking, and insurance. And its clients were firms such as Shell, GM, Sears, Malone & Hyde, GE, General Mills, Exxon. With Bayard as its president, the company's growth accelerated and he kept his sights on the long term. He started the development of all of East Memphis, really, I mean, the way I see it, and, uh, and that's, been a, uh, that's been a great thing. So, um, uh, and all their, their properties were quality properties. Um, uh, so it, it, was, it, it was a good group to sort of lead the community in real estate development. He had a remarkable vision about outlying property and raw land. He was uh, very wise in understanding how the city would grow when it did grow, and he was very patient. So he bought, he bought land way ahead of its time. In the 60s, these large pieces of land became outstanding developments such as Farmington in Germantown and River Oaks in East Memphis. And in 1972, Boyle paved the way for the city's eastward growth with the development of another key parcel at Poplar and I-240 into Ridgeway Center. Cited by many as Memphis' first office park and one of the first in the South, Ridgeway Center became home to two million square feet of office space, restaurants, a church, a school, condominiums, a towering Hyatt Regency Hotel, and the Regalia Shopping Center. The area where we're in here at Ridgeway Center, this whole area, all the way from south of Poplar, all the way to north of Walnut Grove, is almost completely part of his vision. He established uh, his foothold out here in the 30s, and then uh, built on that in Ridgeway Center, Humphrey Center, which are very important commercial nodes for the city of Memphis, came about because of his vision. He could see way down the road 
and uh, he made a lot of investments that uh, actually the company is benefiting from today that he made maybe 40, 50, 60 years ago. So he did have great vision. And more than 30 years ago, Boyle applied the same long-term vision to see the future need for an artery connecting Germantown and Walnut Grove south of the Wolf River. Boyle began plans for Humphrey Center at ground zero for the likely artery and more than a decade later Humphreys Boulevard was built almost exactly along his projected route. Today Boyle's properties are home to many of the region's leading companies including Morgan Keegan, Baptist Memorial Health Care, Marsh, Helena Chemical and Thomas and Betts all on the foundation of Bayard Boyle Sr. He was um, an inspirational type of guy. He um, uh, was a person that made you want to achieve, really to make him proud. His business acumen was remarkable, and his ability to relate to people, encourage them, and inspire their loyalty was unmatched. He left a legacy of guidance to countless others. He served as director of the Memphis Chamber of Commerce, president of the Rotary Club, and sat on the boards of two of Tennessee's most prominent financial institutions, First Tennessee Bank and National Life and Accident Insurance Company. I, I think Boyle has brought a very special quality to, to the uh, warehouse, uh, home, and office buildings that have been built in this city. They, they do things first class, and uh, that's the way it ought to be. And while he shared his gift with many community organizations, he had a special place in his heart for Rhodes College where he sat on the board for 26 years. In 1970, the college conferred on Bayard the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities. Ask those who knew him well, and they'll tell you the same thing. He was a visionary businessman, a gifted athlete, had close friends in high places, and could trace his roots back to the city's founders. But he never put himself on a pedestal, sought the limelight, or treated the people around him as other than equal. He didn't take things seriously that you ought not take seriously. Didn't take himself seriously, but he took seriously what he really believed in. He, he was uh, really strong on honesty, honor, integrity, and courage, and uh, loyalty. He really had those qualities in spades, and he instilled them in others. He told me a story once that uh, he had developed some subdivision lots up in the Poplar White Station area, uh, north of Poplar. And he sold a lot to Kimmons Wilson to build a market house on. And he said, several months went by, and one day uh, Mr. Wilson comes to see him, and he says, Bayard, we got a little bit of a problem here. He said, I built that house on the wrong lot. We need to straighten that out. Well, conventional wisdom today, people, people would say, well, geez, Mr. Wilson, I'm real sorry. Thank you for the house. He said, I let him sweat overnight, and the next day I said, come on, we'll swap deeds. You can have the lot you built a house on. <laughs> Shows you what kind of a man he was. Probably one of my fondest memories of him, he, he loved to play golf, and I loved to play golf, and he took me to a lot of great golf courses, and it took me several years to get up the... Uh, the gumption to ask him to take me to a specific wonderful golf course and I finally asked him and we were sitting in his office and uh, um, he looked at me and he had that twinkle and that kind of look that I always sort of interpreted as you know you damn fool kind of glint in his eye and he said uh, you know when are you going to understand uh, that you belong to these kind of golf courses so you can take your friends and I thought golly you know, he views me as a friend, and he made you feel like you were seven feet tall. And he did that for everybody. Well, a business project, a social project, a civic project, when he got involved in it, the crowd swelled. And he just had that kind of magnetism and leadership. If oil investment was done, it was done right. And that was just like a handshake used to be in the cotton business.